Hi, this is going to be a great week. I have wonderful interviews lined up all week. So if you haven't subscribed or followed, do that right now so that you'll get notifications. And you can join us. And because we are live, um, you can ask questions. So we invite your, your comments, your questions, anything that might pop into your head. That's why we do this live, so you have the opportunity to give some feedback. Today will be very interesting. We're talking to Ira Wagler. And if you don't know the name, you might remember the, the book Growing Up Amish, New York Times bestseller. Well, his new book is out. It's called Broken Roads. Here is a picture of it right here. And the subtitle is Returning to My Amish Father. So this will be interesting. You know, for a, a Texas guy, uh, I don't know really much about the Amish other than what I see in movies and a local furniture store. And so I probably know nothing about the Amish. So Ira, I'm going to ask you, uh, welcome by the way, good to have you here today. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate that. Now this is, this is interesting to me. So help me out, um, especially, you know, from a faith standpoint, I, I, I just don't, I don't know really what the Amish believe. I hear things, but you tell me what I need to know so we got a little, get a little bit of a, a framework to your story. Okay, uh, just real briefly, the, the Amish come from the, uh, in the Reformation, they, they, uh, they came from what was called the Anabaptists, and those were rebaptizers. They believed in, a, in an adult, uh, you know, an adult uh, profession of faith. And uh, they do uh, the scriptures, you know, as far as through Jesus and, and the basic Christianity, um, they believe that. It just seems uh, that they have developed quite a, a structure of, uh, of, of lifestyle and I would say regulations and rules that they kind of add to it, but the, but the gospel is there. They do believe in the, in the, in the Reformation message, you know, salvation by faith. Okay, so and now in your first book, um, you talk about leaving some of that, right? Yeah. Why, why was that a problem for you growing up? Well, it is really, uh, it's kind of ironic, really, and it wasn't really planned that way. Uh, the first book is the young, you know, the teenager. And the first book basically tells how I grew up and, and then how I left. But the teenager struggling to figure it out. And eventually, in my 20s, uh, actually breaking away and leaving. And then, you know, that was a number of years ago that book came out. And then the second one, I worked on off and on for quite a while. And eventually, it, uh, it got picked up by a publisher. It came out in May uh, last month. And I didn't really think about it that much, Randy, but the second book is actually the story of circling around and going back home. Now, not as an Amish person, but just to keep the relationship with my family. And that's really what it was. Okay, and now I know I, I, my perception, tell me if I'm wrong, uh, is that the Amish are, are huge on family. Is that? Oh yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, it's, it's just, <laughs> I tell you what, there's something about that culture and, and and the families that are, you know, that the each the, each church district is made up of individual families, and the families, you know, they still have relatively large families by today's standards. Uh, I have five brothers and five sisters, so there were 11 in my family. <laughs> That's a lot by today's standards. But anymore, uh, probably six to eight children is more of an average family for the Amish. And yes, family is extremely important to them, and that and working. Uh, doing uh, working in the trades on the farm whatever is also it's just all kind of a lifestyle that is just kind of combined you know and uh, and the family is extremely critical so what did it what did it do to them when when you left uh, I didn't quite get the question what did it do to them when you left well my I, I look back over the whole thing you know and and there's so many things you know if, if a guy if all of us i think would it would be that way but if i can go back and, and walk that road again you know i'd do a lot of things different i think most of us would sure but for me it was it was really traumatic because i would leave and i left for the first time first book 17 years old you know a kid got up in the middle of the night and just left you know and, and it just boggles in my mind kind of today and it boggles the mind of the people that I talked to that that happened, you know. And then over the course of the next five years or so, I, I, I left and came back home. I could never, wherever I was, I was like, I wasn't, this isn't quite right. And when, so I was outside world, I was like, I want the security of my Amish family. And when I was in there, then I was, I was, uh, it was so, so stifling, you know, too many rules, too many regulations, and that I couldn't stay. 
And eventually I just actually broke away. And, uh, and I look back now, you know, from today's perspective, you can, you can look back and see things. And I, 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 I have a lot of regrets, of course, but, but yanking my mom and dad around in all those like coming and going, leaving, coming, going, coming, that was, that was traumatic. You know? mm. It just was. Uh, but when I left for the last time, they knew that I had, I had, I had grappled for, I had fought this fight for years and years. And I left with peace in my heart because I had become a believer, you know, I'd become a Christian and they could see that the, something had happened. They weren't quite sure why, but that last leaving was much more calm. You know, the previous ones were, you know, I was running wild. And the, the last time I was like, I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm just leaving. And, and I did, and then I went to college, got my education and so forth. Of course, I was older, 10 years behind the normal college student, but mm -hmm. that's fine. Life's not fair. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious, is, do you, explain to me how the Amish beliefs in Christianity are either compatible or incompatible. I just don't know. Uh, as compared to what? Christianity and then the Amish beliefs, because you said yeah. you left the Amish to become a Christian, and I'm, I'm, well, I thought, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, they, they would consider themselves, um, oh, what's the word, Protestant Christians. You know, they believe in like an adult, you know, adult. Like when you're, when you grow up, then you, then you make the decision to join. They don't, they don't. Children don't join. They don't baptize babies. But their basic, uh, their basic faith is, uh, is a regular Protestant religion, except it has all these very plain rules that mm -hmm. they that they adhere. So it's not so it's not so much an incompatibility between Christianity and the Amish beliefs. Maybe just a lot of uh, legalism that goes with being Amish that's not necessarily um, essential to Christianity. Is that fair? That that's that's fairly well put. Uh, it's basically uh, the reform. You know, it's 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 evangelical Christianity, except it's not. They don't believe in you know going out and and proclaiming the gospel or anything. They they believe in in witnessing their faith by their actions and mm -hmm. I a lot of that is so much a part of me anymore <laughs> I came out of that culture so I don't come up to you and say do you believe in Jesus I'm like you can tell by my, the way I live yeah. you know and you can come and talk to me and that's kind of that's an Amish thing you know they're okay. very quiet about it but they also are very very deeply set in their ways and yeah that includes the Christianity as well yeah well I, I wish I, I kind of wish more Christians were deeply set in their ways, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> so explain why you went back and what happened when you went back. Well, you know the uh, the times I was a young man. I'd left the uh, you know I'd leave, and then when I was like I said, I was out there. I was I wanted the structure of my community, and when I was in the community, I could not stand it because it was too stifling, and. Uh, and eventually, um, it was just like, you know, you have to make a decision one way or the other. And I could not make that decision until I had some calmness in my own heart, which was, you know, coming from my own uh, journey of faith, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and becoming a Christian. And then after that, after that really happened to me, and I was in my 20s, then I could look at it. And, and, uh, and at that point, I was like, you know, you could stay, and there'd be nothing wrong with that. But you can also leave, and there's nothing wrong with that. Once I grasp that, you know, mm -hmm. that concept of leaving, and you're not lost, leave and not be lost. That's in the first book, you know. And once I grasped that concept, then it was like, you know what, I'm gone. And, and, and I tried to, the last time I tried to leave as gently with a few waves, but I was gone. And there was no way they were going to hold me. Yeah. So in this second book, uh, you talk about going back and, and restoring a relationship with your father. Yeah. Tell me what happened there. Well, that was a long journey. It's, it's when you break away, like I did with the first book, a lot of trauma, finally breaking free, and you're out in the in the, you know the outside world. Uh, and and the first few first year, you know, first first while when I when I left, I was like, I want nothing to do with these people. They're backwards. I want you know, don't even don't even get me started. But as the years passed, you know what? I, I circled around, settled right in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, one of the biggest Amish communities in the world. And I love to be around these people. I work at a building supply uh, a company. We sell, we deal with them. I can talk to them. I just don't want to drive a horse and buggy. You know? <laughs> That's really what it boils down to. <laughs> what? What? A, I think it's probably a little more than that, but um, as far as the return, because yeah. there were some relationships that needed some mending, correct? Oh yeah. As far as as far as the circling back, then. Um, then, it, like I said, I'd settled in Lancaster County, and I would go home and visit uh, my parents and my family. 
and uh, it was I was always I will tell you, um, Randy, I was always welcome at home. I, when I would go home, it would be only for a couple of days. Not you know, you don't stay long. Fishing company starts smelling after three days, you know. Uh, but I would go home maybe for Christmas, stay a couple of days with my younger brother. We both left, and uh, we were always we were never disclaimed. We were always we, we were always their sons. My parents mm-hmm. always claimed us as their sons, but then they would dad would come up with like we need to come home rejoin you know join the church and just be a good Amish person which at that point was just it was just going whoosh right over my head because I wasn't really listening because that was not an option for me but but so that was a relationship you know going home to visit trying to get something established with my father and uh, over the course of probably uh, 30 years um, and that's what the second book is about when I would travel home and uh, we we respected each other he had some boundaries that he couldn't he couldn't really step over and uh, the, one of the most powerful scenes, I think, in the second book is once when I went home, um, mom was ill, she had Alzheimer's, she, was not, she wasn't far away from her desk. And I went home to visit them, and in the evening, my sister, they lived on her farm, a little a small house, daughter house, and she brought over, it was late afternoon, she brought over a tray of food, set it on the table, and said, man, here is your supper. And to me, it was a big deal because I was being shunned. You know, my parents, my dad would not eat with me for all these years because I was excommunicated. That that evening, uh, I walked out to the kitchen's very small house, sat down, he came out, stopped a little bit to see how mom was doing, she's on a chair there, and he came over, he sat down beside me on that little small table, he prayed the German prayer, and he and I ate our meal, Mm. and that was just a huge, huge deal to me, just to eat with my father. I mean, you almost have to be from the culture to even grasp that, but but it's a big deal, you know, when you're being shunned, and for me, uh, the shunning consisted mostly of just not eating with me, and so it was never like, oh, you're, you know, it was never like, you're a bad person or, you know, whatever. It was just like we're not, we can't eat on the same table, and I accepted that, you know. And then when, the, then when he decided that he could, uh, that was a, it was just a huge emotional, phys- you know, it was in my head. It was like this is a big deal, and it was. Yeah, it was a big deal. yeah. It's a big deal to eat with your dad when he's shunning you. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. That's why this is interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Uh, so we're, we're, we're talking to Ira Wagler, and his new book, Broken Roads, Returning to My Amish Father, is out. It's available now. You can pick it up. It's the follow-up to the New York Times bestseller, Growing Up Amish. And, you know, aside from just the, the cultural things, um, the, the eating a meal with, with your father, I, I mean, that sounds a little strange to the outside world, the rest of us, but there's something definitely deeper going on here mm-hmm. between you and your, your father. Mm-hmm. Give us some insight into the, the importance of that, the significance of that, and, and why that that's enough to write a book about. You know what, that's, a, that's an excellent question. And see, when that journey was happening, when I was coming around and trying to reestablish these relationships and trying to get it back to where I thought it needed to be, when you're in that process, you don't really think about it. You know, now I can look back and say, oh, you know, I made this much progress here and then this and that, and then finally we ate together and it kind of, we kind of settled it there and, and after that. But but it's um, it's just, when you're in the middle of that journey, you don't really think about it. It's very unique to the culture that, you know, shunning is even an, an issue, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's very unique to the Amish. Um, the, uh, I don't, I mean, I guess I'm, I, I go back to your question again, because I kind of lost my train of thought there. Well, I'm just, I'm looking at a, a father-son, which, well, I mean, what, what is more illustrative in the Bible than the father and the son, right? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I'm looking at that relationship that was broken by a choice you made, um, but yet also perpetuated by um, a tradition that he held. So something had to happen for there to be some sort of reconciliation. I, 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 did he pass recently? Was it, did I get that? Yeah, the book is actually, the second book, Broken Roads, is actually, uh, the book opens with me traveling up. He lived up in Canada where I was born, in a small community there just over the border from Buffalo, like in, in southern Ontario. And he was in a coma, basically ill, and was on his deathbed. And it was the day after Christmas in 2018, so it would be a couple years ago, hmm. uh, I drove up. And, uh, and he was basically waiting on someone. You know, I, I always said he was waiting on one of his sons 
to come and tell him that it's okay to go. And mm. so I walked in there, a little bedroom there in the house. He was in a coma, didn't know, you know, no, no recognition, no nothing. And I just simply talked to him. This is all in the book and uh, told him it's okay to go. He needs to go to where mom is. And so Jesus is waiting and, and never made any indication. Two hours later, he passed. Mm. I think he heard me and I think he, he was released. And the other connection that he and I had that might have been, um, I don't want to say it was a closer connection than the other children, my brothers and sisters, but of all his children, the man was a writer, you know, in an Amish world, he was widely known in his time, very famous in the, in that culture. And uh, I'm the only child that, that took it up, you know, that, that writes. Mm -hmm. And it, that was fairly special to him. I look back now mm -hmm. and it's like, you know what, one of my sons is doing what, what was in my heart. And so he kind of, I think it pulled him maybe a little bit toward me as well, instead of just me pulling towards him. It was both of us trying to, trying to make it work, trying to get together, you know, and then yeah. we made it happen. We just did. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. What about your, you mentioned your siblings, five brothers, five sisters. Did I hear that that's right? Correct. Yep. Oh my goodness! Um, <laughs> what, what's yeah, the and, and I'm number nine in the so I'm one of the I'm at the tail end, you know. Oh, okay. If, if they wouldn't have had a large family, I wouldn't be here. Uh, what, uh, what what was it like with them uh, when you left the Amish culture, and what's it like today? Well, what it was like back then, uh, some of them had already you know left the Amish or, or had joined the Mennonites or whatever, weren't weren't driving a buggy anymore. Uh, and so uh, some of them took it, you know, fairly hard. They were, you know, they would have preferred that I would have stayed, the ones that were, you know, stayed Amish. With time, I will say that with time, uh, we all reconcile today. Every one of my brothers and sisters, Amish, non-Amish, uh, we get along well. We love each other and, uh, and we're just there for each other. And I cannot appreciate that enough. I appreciate that a lot. That's great. And today, today we have all, all we're, we're, we're all good with each other. You know? Yeah. Okay, great. This, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. Let us into some of the, the spiritual journey of Ira Wagler. Um, cause it's, I, you know, for, I, I mean, Hey, I grew up in, Protestant evangelical kind of circles and I know that so many preachers kids and deacons kids other other kids in the church have, have twisted off and just because they reject something in their parents or something in the church they throw everything out and they just reject God but you come from a very what I think most of us would consider very legalistic background Mm -hmm. um, and with, with traditions that seem antiquated. Yeah. But in rejecting some of those ways, you didn't reject God. I find that very interesting. So I'd, I'd love to hear sort of your personal spiritual journey well, and struggle. That's a good question. <laughs> and um, it's, it's not because I had any, you know, it wasn't because I was, oh, I want God. It was like, I think the Lord, when, when you have a heart that is searching for truth and searching for him, which I hardly knew I was even doing that, mm. uh, I think the Lord honors that. And, uh, and for me, uh, I became free from the culture once I grasped what salvation really was and that it's really not your works. It's just, you know, is, is Jesus in your heart? Do you believe in him? And do you believe in salvation through Christ? And once I, you know, and it was a very, it was a very, um, I don't want to say shallow, it was a kind of a very, just a tentative grasp at the beginning, but it was real, you know, and in, and in time then I, I grew into it and it's a, the new birth is a miracle. I don't care where it is or who it is. So mm -hmm. I would just say it was a miracle, you know, and that's, that it's the same thing for me. And then, uh, then once I broke away, uh, I was hostile towards towards the culture for a year or two. Gradually started circling around. Long journey, you know. It doesn't happen overnight, not mm. in a couple of years. But the circle around, like, oh well, you know, some of that wasn't so bad. Some of it was actually good. And um, and now I'm just very content to live my life. I know what I believe, and I'm also very content to lead them to live their lives. You know, instead of trying to go change them. You know, the Lord will change them whenever he whenever he feels like somebody needs to, you know, he can lead them. It's not my job. My job is simply to, to live for Christ and, and to reflect that. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious, what do they think about you? 
<laughs> what do they think about? The, about you, the the culture, now that you're writing books about well, sort of that experience. Well, you know, they, uh, the first book, it was funny because my father, um, this was back in 2012, so it's a lot of years, and he wouldn't read it for a year or two because he was like, I think he was kind of half uh, intimidated by it, but he finally did read it. And uh, and you know what? I The next time I went up, he and I talked, about, I made him talk about it. And I said, what did you think of my book? And then he would talk about it. You know? <laughs> And I made him do it, and I was so glad because some of that conversation is actually in the second book of Broken Roads. I just recorded it there. Uh, he was concerned, you know, he was concerned about the way that the world looks at the Amish, the way the world looks at him. He's a character, you know, he's the father. And uh, I just told him, I said, Dad, you know, we're all flawed. You are, I am. And the book was simply telling the story of a, a very gifted man, but a flawed man. And that's the way it is with all of us, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah, um, what does the world think of you? Do you when yeah. you do we do secular well, interviews or whatever? They, what do well, they think? Well, the thing of it was he realized that the book had sold. You know, it's it's sold. Uh, it's approaching two hundred thousand copies. Back in back when we talked, it was probably one hundred and forty, one hundred and thirty. But it's a good chunk of books. You know, that's huge. And then for him, it was like, wow, you know, all these people and they read about it. His <laughs> name, all the names are real. <laughs> so he was he was a little bit. It, it kind of hit him that 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 I told the story. Uh, my story of, of emerging from the culture and from his family. You know? Yeah, what is, what is the secular world? How do they respond to you? You Could, mean to the first book? You do that to, to, to the book, to your story, the Amish. You left the Amish uh, and now you're a Christian. And I got to yeah, figure the, that... that, that the Amish are kind of, uh, you know, to write... Uh, it's one, if I'm a lucky man that I came from that culture because I have a story that people want to hear. All of us have stories. But most of us can't market them, or because they're not that different. You know, <laughs> yeah. coming from the Amish is very different. And uh, and for me to you know to emerge from that and be able to tell that story, and I did it, and I and I tried to. The first book has a little, probably a little bit of anger in it yet, just a slight <laughs> bit here and there. You know, if I can, if I go look for it. This second book, I believe, I, I my heart, I was, I had no gr There was, there was nothing I wanted to no no pet uh, projects, nothing. I just wanted to tell my story. Yeah. And I believe it's a far more gentle book. I believe yeah. it is. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming that there's no one Amish watching right now. But <laughs> it could be. It could be. Online. Could be. I mean, they're, are they they're online? They're not online anymore, you know. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, there might be someone who is ex-Amish who is yeah. still going through some of the things that you went through, struggling with things. Yeah. Um, what would you say to them? Or any, right, frankly, anyone who has left the the faith they grew up with, what would you yeah. say to those, those people that are struggling? Well, I heard from a lot of people from the first book that came from religious, uh, restrictive religious backgrounds. Yeah. It could be you no know, Jewish, Muslim, anything, Christian. And my, I don't want to say I just have a, you know, this canned response, because I try not to, I try to listen to each one that contacts me. The first thing I tell them, and then see a lot of these, a lot of these, a lot of these people that are struggling. A lot of them are minors. You know, they're they're 16, 17. Right. I advise anyone to at least hang in there till you're an adult. You know, till you're 18. I didn't. I when I was young, <laughs> 17. You know, so I'm preaching that I didn't do what you know, do what I do what I say, not what I did. You know, uh, but uh, you know, just to to tell that story, and then then I just my philosophy and what I believe is um, you. Trust God, you walk free, and you have, and you don't be afraid. And that's what I try to tell people. Just if you don't have all the answers now, trust God, talk to Him, and they will come. You know, and it might be a much different. It'll, it will be a much different journey than mine, but it will be yours. You know, yeah. and I, that that. So I don't pretend to have advice for everybody. But <laughs> you know what? If you want to talk to me about it, you know, and you're going through that journey, I can I can definitely I, I can listen and I can talk. Yeah. You do you do a lot of writing still uh, on your website, and so I want to show people that. It's at irawagler.com, yep. and uh, eh, you know you can't see it on the screen, but it's i r a w a g l e r dot com for those of you paying attention. Uh, give us a little bit of an idea of, of the, the different things you're you're talking about and that you like to address uh, currently. Uh, you mean just in my writings in general? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. So, because you well, you well, you've got a lot on here. You, you got yeah. a lot, yeah. So, 
Well, what happened was um, in when I started writing was in 07, my marriage exploded for the first time in my life. I just, my, that freed my voice and I began to write and I launched this blog, ironwagler.com. And that is, that's like my safe place. That's when I have nothing else to say, when I can speak nowhere else, I can always write on my blog and I can always be completely honest there. And that's a safe place for me. So I still go back. I, I post about once every three to four weeks. Uh, you know, it's not I'm not on it every day, hmm. uh, but it lets my it's a connection to my readers. I tell stories, uh, you know, about you know my background or current events, just whatever I want to write about. And it's a good it's a good outlet because it just kind of keeps me honest and keeps my voice going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you you did you say your marriage exploded? Is that something you talk about? What does that mean? Uh, what what do I, I didn't get the question. I, th I thought you said that uh, in 2007 your marriage exploded. Did I hear you correctly? Yeah, my marriage exploded. Yeah, I had been married for, uh, I, I grew up and left the culture in 2000, the year 2000. I, I married a young lady. We, she was a little younger than me, also came from a plain background, not Amish, but Mennonite. Our marriage lasted seven years, seven year itch. I mean, I tell you what, it was, I mean, they they got the term seven year itch for some, some reason, you know. So at seven years, uh, it blew up. Uh, she left. Uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not blaming her or whatever. It just, it was what it was. From that trauma, my voice was born. And oh, four okay. years later, I had a New York Times bestseller. Huh. So, so all the, basically what that tells me is I should have been writing long before I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that, that tells me that you, re you relate to what people go through, um, and yet you still haven't lost your faith. And so that's, that's encouraging. That's yes, encouraging. Yes. Well, well, what do you see for uh, what's next? What's your third book? What do you do after this? Well, you know what? It's it's strange <laughs> that you asked that because um, when I wrote the first book and all I wanted to do was get to the end of that story, which was when I was leaving, and that's where I got to. And then uh, and I was like, you know, the market, the, the book did did well, and the market, of course, well, right now you have to write another one. <laughs> right. So the publisher came, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, you know, and I tried, and I said, nope, it's not working. I said, when I have something to show you, I'll, I'll let you know. Mm. And that's what I did, and, and it took nine years. It took nine years between books, and that's a long time, but you know what? It came when it came, and, uh, and the story, you know, it's, <laughs> again, the new birth is a miracle, and it's just just because it's me with my Amish background doesn't make it really any more than a miracle than it is for you, you know, yeah. coming out of your background. Yeah. Uh, the Lord, I believe, looked out and, and, and protected me in many, many ways where, you know, I should have been dead or something, you know. It's just it, many, many times over the years I've been in places where it uh, wasn't the best place to be, and, um, and he protected me and, and brought me through it, and so it just increases my faith, you know. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, I feel very free to grumble if I feel like grumbling, you know, because <laughs> that's, that's my writing. You know, you just, and that's the reason the writing works is because I just tell you how, how I feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I say on here a lot that, that life is a journey, and a lot of people feel like they, you know, either they've, they're insufficient or God's left them or whatever because they haven't arrived. And it's like, yeah. you know, that's... That's sort of not the point. It's a pilgrim's progress kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's this yeah. journey well, we're, we're I, going I through. That. I hear that. And, and it's a miracle. I mean, I, I just, I mean, you've, you've kind of forced me to think about some of that stuff more than I have just re <laughs> recently because you went there, you know, and, and I, and I'll probably, I'll probably peruse that in my head for a while, but it's just, it's just flat out a miracle. It, it's, it's just what it is for all of us. But, you know, I, I don't know that one person's miracle is not necessarily any bigger than the next person. It's just the gift of, of life and grace, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a powerful and beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. And I appreciate you sharing that because th that I think somebody needed to hear that today. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Uh, uh, if if you find this interesting, share it. If you don't find it interesting, share it. Uh, so <laughs> share this interview. And if you haven't subscribed or followed uh, on the places where we are doing this Life Today Live every day, Monday through Friday, come back and join us. Follow, uh, subscribe. You will get notifications. And Ira, again, I, I appreciate your time. Appreciate your sharing. And uh, I will encourage people to get your book right now. This is a, the picture of the, the cover, Broken Roads. So just a little inspiration on your journey, wherever you're at. Um, just be encouraged, because I'll tell you what, 
the one thing I do know is that the God isn't hiding. And if you will just continue pressing and looking for him, he will, he will show himself to you and he will bring you, he will walk along with you on your journey and bring you to a good place. So that's your encouragement for today. Again, thank you, Ira. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll see you in nine years when your next book comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we'll see the rest of you here tomorrow on Life Today Live. Oh.